everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Z Cohen Sanchez, Executive Director of Soul Strategies. Z, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. I am so excited to talk to you right now. We have been talking about this election for months. Election night is finally here. It is right after 1130 on Tuesday night. I do want to give our viewers a timestamp of where we are to kind of give an insight into the conversation. So results are still coming in across the country, but a clearer picture is being painted right now. As of now, there are still pathways to victory for both Donald Trump and uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. But as we sit here, Harris has 187 votes electoral votes to former President Donald Trump's 230, according to the Associated Press. You hear those numbers. What are your thoughts? So, I mean, let's let's just start by saying that it's not the night that we necessarily thought it was going to be. Um, Virginia certainly a shock. There are some states that I think we thought we were going to do a lot better in that we have not. Um, but I, I still don't think it's over. I mean, there's still a path to victory. We're very close in PA, very close in Wisconsin and Michigan. So, um, still, there's still hope there. So you definitely sound cautiously optimistic. So let's talk about that a little bit. Where do you see her pathway to victory? What are you looking at when you see the tea leaves, when you see these results coming in that are giving you, you know, that excitement? So I definitely cautiously optimistic. I mean, it looks like Georgia and North Carolina are going to be in the most part, although things could shift slightly in Georgia because they're still counting Atlanta, they're still counting Gwinnett County, um, very, very important places for Democrats in Georgia. So still there, um, on ABC, they, they were saying that the chance of that are pretty small. Even if she outperforms in those areas, it's still a pretty slim chance that Georgia is going to look positive for us. However, um, even if we do lose Georgia, even if we do lo lose North Carolina, uh, PA, Wisconsin, and Michigan, I think are going to be the path forward to victory. Uh, which all looks so close right now, at least the last time I checked. I know that this was touted as a close race. I know that it is not over. The results are still coming in. The New York Times ticker, though, has Donald Trump's chances of winning at over 85 percent as you and I are talking. So you hear that number. What's your thoughts? Listen, it is um, the path to victory slim <laughs> right now. It is. It is um, but, you know, Again, there's still hope. I mean, remember the Bush and um, and uh, Al Gore race came down to a few hundred votes in Florida. Um, the the way that PA is looking right now, it could really come down to a couple thousand votes in the end. Same thing with with Wisconsin. So I think we still need to look at those as the possibilities. Um, the problem becomes is that we're narrowing our different pathways to victory at this point. Um, originally, obviously, Georgia was a very, very sure path to victory for us. We were able to pick that up along with PA, very, very for, almost for sure victory. Um, but we still have the issue of the fact that we're not going to get that state, very unlikely that we're going to get that state. So we're, our, our path is, is a lot more narrow. And also, if we lose Virginia, um, our path could narrow even further. So what are you hearing right now in other conversations with Democrats? What is the vibe like in the group chat? Give us some insight there. <laughs> um, stressed, <laughs> very stressed. Um, you know, it's interesting because I think that the night started uh, a down, a downfall with Florida. And I think that a lot of people were expecting to, well, at least Democratic operatives were expecting to see Florida, at least in a similar fashion to where what Biden did, which I believe that he won, uh, sorry, lost 100% last time, very, very small margin. So the fact that we are 10 points behind a floor, that's, that was, that hurt at the beginning of the night a lot. And I think, you know, that again, that Virginia, Virginia should be a solid blue state and we're underperforming. Also, there are definitely some places um, in like different suburbs, particularly in PA, that we thought were going to be better. Not so much. So again, MPA is not a place to rule out, but slimmer path. It's definitely too early for a postmortem. But when you're saying things like we thought we, this would be a better result and it's not as of right now, do you think Democrats effectively turned out cities? What does that look like? Yeah, well, I think that there are definitely places that the campaign just thought that they didn't need to be, right? Um, and this was an issue back with Hillary's campaign in 2016 as well. 
Oh, it is very interesting that there are some places where Kamala is not doing as well as Hillary did, which I think was very unexpected. I think people went into this thinking that Kamala was a much stronger candidate, is a much stronger candidate than Hillary Clinton, more convinced story, all of those things. But it, it's not reflecting in the numbers. And that, you know, could be for a number of reasons. I mean, the fact that this was a very short campaign, um, the fact that Trump has been in full swing, you know, the entire time. It, yeah, it's there are definitely states that we thought that we would do better in. I know that for political junkies like you and I, this is like our Super Bowl, staying up, watching the election. When I'm thinking about to other elections like 2016, Democrats I talked to then were really shocked that Hillary Clinton didn't win. If we remember, the Javits Center seemed like a celebration at the beginning of the night. And then as hopes waned, she ended up not coming out. In 2020, Joe Biden won. It was a different story. What do you feel like now in 2024? Are you drawing any comparisons to recent election nights? What does that look like? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think that going into this, we understood that this was going to be the tightest race. Everybody was saying it, that it was going to be one of the tightest races in history. So I don't think that that's necessarily, um, I, I do think that people were more confident in Hillary's win in 2016 than they were in Kamala Harris although she is a strong, I think, a stronger candidate in terms of her profile. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, again, some of those states uh, is, is concerning. I mean, it means that we haven't been there doing the work for long enough. And I think that if anything, if Trump does win tonight, um, I think that the Democrats really need to take some inward reflection about what we can be doing to make sure that in, we're not ruling off states like Virginia again, and that we're able to actually have a presence in those states. Let's talk about that scenario now, because if Donald Trump does win tonight, what do you think the first thing Democrats should do is? You know, <laughs> we're, we're, I think that the part, party is going to need to have a major overhaul and restructure. You know, I think it's definitely going to be one of those situations. This is not going to be a, a Hillary 2016 loss. I think that this is having a president like Trump, somebody who is a felon, you know, all of these things. This is not, you know, he was in a very different situation when he ran against Hillary than what he is now. And so I think as a party, we're gonna really have to do some inward reflection um, and we're gonna have to start running some really serious campaigns. I mean, we're, I don't think that after tonight, if Trump does become the winner, that it's gonna be time for us to be, um, you know, crying and being upset about the results. I think that we need to jump into action because 2025, we have some very serious races, including in Virginia. But we aren't at that point yet. There are still some pathway to victories as we sit here right now. So what is your eye on after you and I hang up, you're turning on the TV, what specific state and county are you looking at? All PA, 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 PA all the way, honestly. Um, I think PA is gonna be our biggest struggle. Um, I think it's going to be the closest state, and I think ultimately, who win, who wins PA wins the presidency, right? So um, I think that, and I also unfortunately think that it's going to be the longest state <laughs> for us to probably get the results in. I've been talking about this election. I know you have too now for months and months. And a similar sentiment, especially in recent weeks, is this is going to be a long night. The election won't be called the same night. It'll take maybe a week. It'll take at least a couple of days. I was thinking back to 2020 when that was called on Saturday. Obviously, election night is on a Tuesday. But it seems like there's a different picture here. I was just talking to a pollster who said, I think if you're not going to bed, this race could be called at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. We could get a result tomorrow. So what do you think then was missing from this conversation about the election? Yeah, you know, I, I, I also don't think that, that they're going to be able to do anything tonight just because I think these states are going to be so close that very, very likely we could have multiple states going into a recount. I think that's a very likely row here, um, but but I do I do think that you know we will probably get results faster than what we did um, for the 2020 election because uh, people forget obviously that there was COVID during the 2020 election. We had an enormous amount of mail-in ballots, and so that obviously slowed down the process significantly. Also, back then, a lot of these places, like in PA, were not prepared to be able to count that many mail-in ballots. It was a shock all at once, and they have said that they are very much prepared. Um, to be able to take that on at a much faster rate this time. So I don't think it'll be as, as late as Saturday, but I also don't think we're going to find out tonight.
Well, we still have our eye on all of those battleground states as results are coming in. Z Cohen Sanchez, per usual, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you also for this entire election season joining me. And I hope that once the results are fully in, you can join me again. Would love to. Thanks so much for having me, Brittany.